Stop, stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. I would like to encourage everyone on my Facebook friends list, everyone in my social groups, and all of my listeners from around the globe, please do me a favor. Hit that like button, subscribe to my YouTube page, and share this video podcast on all social media sites you are on, such as Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, TikTok, and LinkedIn, ladies and gentlemen. This video podcast is available in three forms, audio, video, and as a written text in order for us to reach our audience. I am the founder and president of GRICAM, the Grassroots Community Activist Movement. Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast is our black media component. For those of you who don't know me, then get to know me by purchasing and reading my story. Quote, The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America, Second Edition, is available as an e-book for $9.99 or as a paperback for $15 plus shipping and handling. I provide the link to my Amazon author page in the comment section below this video podcast. After you have read my story, and if you agree with my vision and plan to improve black America, specifically black Chicago, then make arrangements with me to come on this platform, get on camera, and let's talk about it. And encourage others to get involved with our cause and back this film project. We have upgraded our platform by moving from an audio po- podcast to a video podcast using StreamYard. We want to interact with our audience in real time through Facebook Messenger do- during our live stream. I created GRCAM in order to connect with other like-minded black Americans, like-minded African immigrants within the United States of America, Afro-Caribbeans, Afro-Latinos, and Afro-Brazilians, as well as continental Africans. I encourage everyone on my Facebook page, everyone in my social groups who are black entrepreneurs, African entrepreneurs, black artists, African artists, black authors, African authors, musicians, poets, community advocates, and spiritual leaders to make arrangements with me to come on this platform so that you can promote your products and services or share a 30 minute sermon with my listeners from the global community. We want to grow this platform for the global African community throughout the diaspora. For 32 years, the black Americans have taken me for joke, specifically black Chicagoans. They have rejected and overlooked my vision and plan to help improve our communities. All I have is my revised book, my virtual store, my online groups, and this platform. My film project is my last attempt to do to do something positive for my racial group before I cut and run to Africa. I want to use my film, this film project, to reach the black masses and the black world, and let them know who we are and what we're trying to do for our people that's trapped in American ghettos for credibility. Before. We expand to Africa, Brazil, and the Caribbean. Work with me while I'm alive. Don't wait until I'm dead. This is why I, why I am reaching out to African immigrants within the United States of America to help speed up the process. I encourage African immigrants in America from the fo- from the following African nations: South Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania. Uganda, Angola, Liberia, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and Nigeria to please purchase my revised book, either the e-book or the, or the paperback, and read my story. If you agree with my vision and plan to help improve black America, then make arrangements with me to come on this um, platform and let's talk about it. I encourage others to back this film project. Please share my information with your friends, including your non-black friends. This will help speed up the process. Our aim is to raise $250,000. 
we are using crowdfunding. We have GoFundMe page and we also have a PayPal page. If you are a U.S. citizen, then you can use our PayPal page as a tax write-off because this is a legitimate 501c3 nonprofit faith-based and community advocacy organization. My Christian business, we will raise the bar in black America. We will separate ourselves from con artists, the black boule, degenerates, Democrat shields, hardened criminals, pedophiles, off code Negroes, and urban terrorists. Those who reject my vision and plan will not be a part of this Christian business because it's membership-based. We will pray for them, show them tough love, and keep it moving. The question at hand, how long will it take for this film project to get fully funded and made? It's up to the black grassroots and the global African family. We encourage non-black sympathizers to patronize our film project, but it's black Americans and African immigrants who are the CAM members' responsibility to build it and to own it. I try to host my show every week in order to engage people on my friends list and people in my social groups until... I am able to raise the funds for this film project. Once the proceeds from the film starts coming in, then I would be in a better position financially to purchase property in Chicago, buy office equipment, hire qualified black middle class professionals, and African immigrants within the United States to work with me in building the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. I refuse to be ignored. Those of you who will work with me will go down in history with me and Sister Renee. Lord knows I want to do more than just news and social commentaries, but at this point, this is where I'm at. I'm working on a shoestring budget. All of my funds go towards bills, food, and rent. Without financial support from the black grassroots and the global African family, then I am unable to do my God-given assignment which is to build the best African-American business within the United States of America, the Kai of Chicago. This is a Nehemiah assignment. Upcoming events. We are looking for at least 10 people who are interested in being on our panel. If you are friends with me on Facebook, well, you know, my uh, former page, then send me a friend request to my Facebook backup page. Um, basically, I, I'm i wearing my um, the cover of the book, The Solution for Black America um, sh shirt, t-shirt, and I have my hands stretched out. And um, you can see some buildings uh, through the window. So that's my uh, backup page. So um, those of you that's um, on my former uh, Facebook page, I'm unable to get into it. Remember, I shared with you on October 1st, I believe someone from Facebook sent me um, a virus, which actually um, crashed my uh, smartphone and... As a result of that, I'm unable to um, access my um, former um, Facebook page. I only have access to my um, backup page, and it's limited. I only can uh, read messages and respond, and so, you know, that's the bad part of it. But, hey, I'm doing the best that I can. It is what it is, you know. It's life outside of uh, Facebook, but, hey, bottom line. If you want to uh, participate um, on our panel, please send me a friend request and also send me your email address so that we can practice using, um, I'm using a new um, screen, streaming service called Riverside. I will, be, I will be available Sunday, November 3rd through Friday, November 8th, but we have to make arrangements with me through email about when we can, when is a good time for us to try to practice, and also in terms of uh, some of you may live on different time zones, so we have to uh, try to agree on a good time for both of us that's convenient. 
please mark your calendar for our monthly virtual conference. Um, Saturday, it's going to be Saturday, November 9th, 2024, theme, celebrating Gurkham 33rd anniversary, where YouTube Live um, slash River Riverside time 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. American Central Time, 3 p.m. Canadian Time, 8 p.m. West African Time, 9 p.m. South African Time, 10 p.m. East African Time, and 8 p.m. UK Time. Instructions on how to participate on the show. First, watch my video presentation. This is called Side A. After I finish my presentation, then I will open up the phone lines through YouTube and drop a link to the Riverside um, studio. So that way you can interact with me in real time on camera. This is called Side B. And before I, I let anyone come on the show, I want to make sure I can see you first on camera to weed out trolls. The title of this presentation, All Eyes on the Black Votes. I found a CNN video of former First Lady Michelle Obama speech for Vice President Kamala Harris, which blasts men for their democratic right to choose a candidate of their choice. She was promoting gender divide politics to encourage women in America to oppose men. The title of the video, quote, Michelle Obama, Obama makes impression plea to protect women while campaigning for Harris, unquote. I have a prop um, to watch that um, full video. Just go to my medium transcript, and that will be located um, in the comment section below this video podcast. Click on the link, scroll down to show and prove, and there you will be able to uh, pull up that uh, video. I have a problem with her, her speech. The Democrats have been trying to set up a lecturing campaign to mobilize black women into harassing black men to remain on the Democratic plantation and vote for Kamala Harris. First, they sent out Manic, Magic Johnson, then former President Barack Obama, then Spike Lee, now former First Lady Michelle Obama. She's wagging her finger as well at black men with the same message, which is, black women, we got to tell these black men what they need to do in order for us to win this election. But there's a lot of black women who aren't going for that gender divide. The number, numbers are clear. Kamala Harris is not doing well in the polls. Michelle Obama is validating what I've been telling you all for the longest. She's talking about black women needing to get black men to the polls. What's the issue that is going to be used? A woman's right to choose. Notice, she's not talking to black women about economic tangibles other than we we're going to provide a way to make sure that you can delete your own children. That is what's important in this election. Nothing else. This is their sales pitch. Black men have made it clear that if you're not offering any economic tangibles in the form of lineage-based cash payment reparations for descendants of American slaves slash freemen and an anti-black hate crime bill, then we don't have nothing to talk about. Michelle Obama has no business telling black men what to do. We have all of these social issues going on from illegal immigration to a failing economy. All she can talk about is a woman's right to choose. Most black men in America are not married and have no children. For the last three generations, we had these bought and sold, bought and paid for 
domestic coons who are black venomous running around sowing the seeds of disdain between black men and black women for their own political gain. Because as long as black men and black women are fighting each other, then we're not putting our heads and hearts together. That's what it is. As far as this election goes, this is about having the right to an abortion. That's not the number one issue affecting black America. This is the reason why Barack Obama failed at helping Hillary Clinton win the election in 2020, in 2016. Elections are about money in our wallets. Black Americans need economic tangibles and what is the Democrats offering black America? Abortions and legalized marijuana. That's their biggest sales pitch. Michigan so happens to be a state that is leaning towards Donald Trump or Kamala Harris and at least four of the other seven battleground states. This is the Democrat strategy. A week out from the election. This is going to be their voters outreach program. There no way Michelle Obama, high profile as she is, would be saying any of this if Kamala Harris did not agree to it to it. This is a DNC strategy and most Likely she endorsed it. This is about getting the black vote without having to do anything for black Americans. Hillary Clinton also thought that she could work salad her way into the White House too. How did that work out for her? So this is going to be the Democrat strategy, not just for this election, but going forth. No carrots, just sticks and being blunt about it. Who made the Obamas think that they could stand in front of black America, especially black men, from the black grassroots and lecture us and finger wag and insult us? Now, Michelle Obama got the dirt to think that she can demand black American men to vote the way she want us to. She and her husband refused to produce for black voters. Precisely is why many of us are sitting this election out. We are going to watch the Democrats crash and burn. We're speaking with one voice, and this, and that is no economic tangibles. Then, for most of us, we will vote against blue no matter who. You're saying men collective anger at the economy because of that by. Biden-Harris administration, we should not be upset about that. American men should not be upset that the Biden-Harris administration have, has opened the borders and allowed our country to be invaded by illegal immigrants who are sent to sanctuary cities like Chicago, New York City, um, out there in California, in Colorado, etc. Basic services are being taken away from American citizens and given to non-citizens who chose to cross the border and flee their homeland. But according to Michelle Obama, men should not be upset about that at all. To make matters worse, this administration has prioritized all these other groups and have and has given them benefits and resources except black Americans. And now they got the nerve to bring out Obama to wag his finger at black men to vote for Kamala Harris and now his wife. I suggest black men and black women should let the Democrats crash and burn. Michelle Obama thinks that American men should, shouldn't be outraged about the high food prices and, and interest rates. That's why people are not buying homes because the interest rates are too high. That's also creating part of the housing crisis in, in America. American men and American women have the right to be upset. You said something along the lines that voting third party, voting for Trump, or sit, sitting it out is not an option. We have to get 
this election right. First of all, who are you, ma'am, telling Americans what they should do with their voting rights? So I thought y'all were supposed to be the party of voter registration, the party of trying to stop people from doing election interference. Michelle, let's keep it a buck. You don't have to worry about food prices and gas prices because you and your husband are millionaires. You're pointing to you're pointing this to men. You're not pointing out that women are also voting for Trump. We choose not to vote for Kamala Harris because that's our right. Remember how many times y'all have come out and wag your finger at black men trying to keep us on the Democratic plantation. Now all of a sudden, we are harming the, the women in our lives. Michelle, you are supposed to be smarter than this. You have an Ivy League degree. Come on. You don't feel the anger and the pain because you're not connected with the people. You and your husband are multimillionaires. If I was a multimillionaire, I wouldn't feel it either. So you can't relate. The Biden-Harris administration has allowed all these millions of people from third world countries into the United States of America, making it harder for American citizens in a struggling economy. That's between 15 to 30 million people. Because we, we don't know the uh, actual number because they're not counting them because the majority of these people are coming over illegally. They need food, clothes, shelter, and medical care. This election will be a referendum about the Democrat policies and what this is showing the world is all of your celebrities and your political think tanks is out of touch with the American people. Notice she didn't talk down to women who want to vote third party. She didn't talk about the women that chose the sofa. There are plenty of women that's voting for Trump, even black women, but she did not say a word about them. But she wants to attack men. She doesn't want anyone voting for Jill, Dr. Jill Steen or Dr. Cornell West. Y'all listen to me. Tell me you why they got Michelle coming out here. The Democrats are afraid they will lose this election. Remember, Michelle is the lady who said, when they go low, we go high. They're trying to cause a gender divide between men and women. In the video clip, Michelle said your vote is secret. She is trying to tell women to keep secret about who they will vote for from their husbands. Democrats always want to divide families. First, they attack the traditional family. Then they wage war against the procreation of children. Look at what your mantra is. You say reproductive justice and nothing about what you're talking about is reproducing children just call it what it is abortion that's what the democrat party have to offer they want to make sure that you don't reproduce children especially black children while they're allowing millions of illegal immigrants and their children to cross the border notice they're not telling none of these illegal immigrant women about planned parenthood the democrats don't promote the traditional family, a man, a woman, and children. But they're promoting alternative lifestyles. This is why Michelle got up there and tried to throw a wedge between traditional families and modern families. The Democrats are about division, ladies and gentlemen. They're not about bringing families together. So what makes Kamala Harris a decent human being? Giving women access to birth control pills, having the option to have an abortion. Look at what they promote, all the sexual perversions they promote. Then you wonder why a lot of African nations want to join BRICS, which stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa.
and they want to get away from America and Western nations. You wonder why? Because they're tired of the disrespect and other countries. Then we have all this human sex trafficking going on. Venomous has caused a great division within black society. Michelle Obama says in so many words, he ain't got no right to tell you anything. Forget him. You, your own woman. That's Democrats' party teaching. You wonder why American society is screwed up as it is as it pertains to relationship because of that mindset. You wonder why children are doing the most. Well, if you discipline your children, they will call that child abuse. Who started that? The Democrats. If you break up the traditional family, then you break a nation. It's not just the economy. It's what you're promoting and your lack of morals. The Democrats have a wicked influence over black Americans. That influence must be challenged. It's not bringing us close as a people. It's not bringing us unity. It's not giving us any economic tangibles. They can't. We're not telling the truth. If the Democrats take the L in this election, that's going to be a conversation because black Americans will finally realize that we have power at the grassroots level. If black America would just embrace my plan and vision, then within two years' time, we could turn around our inner cities in Chicago. Kamala Harris can't get votes from her own Indian community. Notice, the Democrat shields are not shaming Indian men. I found an article from Al Al Jazeera entitled, quote, U.S. Elections, Why is Kamala Harris Losing Indian American Voters, unquote. To read the full article, just go to my Medium transcript located in the comment section below this video podcast. Click on the link and scroll down to show and prove. I found a a YouTube video about a Chinese college student who was caught illegally voting in Michigan. Michigan says he will be charged, but his vote will still count in our election. To watch the video clip, just go to my Medium transcript located in the comment section below this video podcast. Click on the, the link and scroll down to show and prove. These other groups have been prioritized by the Biden-Harris administration. For example, illegal immigrants have received all sorts of benefits and resources. These these include um, like um, job fairs. These these career politicians have been letting them receive free food, free housing, and free medical assistance, as well as as I stated, private um, job fairs. The problem with these other groups is that they feel entitled when they come here because these career politicians give them things that they didn't earn when they came here. By ch- they came here by choice. This is why God said, if you don't work, you don't eat. They become arrogant, entitled, and they want more. Black Americans have not only innovated the United States of America, our ancestors built this nation. If Kamala Harris gave black American an anti, at least an anti-black hate crime bill, she would have my vote and I believe she would win this election hands down. The Democrats have so much contempt against descendants of American slaves slash freemen. We're not going to give descendants of American slaves a separate anti-black hate crime bill. We're not going to give descendants of American slaves reparations. These Democrats need to learn their lesson because the African American community was the only community who supported them 90% of the time for the past 60 years 
and we have nothing to show for. Even when they mass incarcerated us, we still came out and voted for them. They prioritized all these other groups. Now, s since we're back into an election year, you are all in our space trying to get the black vote. The Democrats are bringing out all these black celebrities like Tyler Perry, Spike Lee, Usher, Magic Johnson, Beyonce, etc. We don't care. We are all they're all clicked in with the Democrats. They are in we are in the information age and black Americans are starting to wake up. We don't want to hear from black celebrities about politics. They need to stay in their lane. If you're a comedian, we enjoy that. If you're a musician, we enjoy that too. But when it comes to getting on stage and talking about politics and who we should vote for, that's a turnoff. The Democrats are prioritizing all of these other groups while they benefit off the black vote. We are aware of their switch, their bait and switch tactics. The Asian community is always talk, talking about voting for Trump. The Latino community is talking about voting for Trump. Y'all sat here and allowed all these illegal immigrants to flood the zone, and now you just imported a bunch of Trump supporters. Look at that. What the white supremacist financial elites meant for harm against black Americans turned out against their interests. They thought that allowing all these illegal immigrants over here and dumping them in the African American community so that they can compete against black Americans for resources. They all they all always wanted to speed up the amnesty process before the election to make sure that the Democrats have a new voter base in every election henceforth. Though the mainstream media, they're promoting the worst images about black Americans. They promote drill music, which glorify the murder of black children. Who runs Hollywood? The Democrats. Who runs the music industry? The Democrats. All this wickedness come from them. Think about American history. The white supremacist financial elites thought that descendants of American slaves slash freemen would be wiped out because of American slavery. We should have been extinct based on how they treated our ancestors during American slavery. The white supremacist financial elites made sure that we didn't have access to quality education, access to health, healthy foods, and access to adequate health care and housing. These white supremacist financial elites are forever sabotaging our progress in this country. I am trying to build the best African American business within the United States of America, but I can't do it alone. It takes a team to make a dream work. It's not my fault I'm unable to find uh, people here in my city. I reached out to them. 32 years online and off and offline. And the people that I speak with, they tell me they're not interested. You know, it is what it is. So this is why I'm online. This is why I created my revised book. This is why I created my virtual store to generate capital so that way I can um, hire people to help me run the business. So this is why I'm reaching out to African immigrants to help speed up that process. And yes, I'm still going to reach out to like-minded black Americans, but I'm, I'm checking everybody. Everybody's going to get checked. Mean we're going to vet them. Make, I'm going to put everything out on the table. And I require that people sign a community pledge, attend our mandatory orientation, so that way uh, everybody, I don't have to be wasting time trying to explain about this organization that I'm trying to get off the ground, which is the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. And um, 
we just going to do the best that we can to help um, the uh, black families that's in the inner cities, starting on the west side of Chicago, Austin, um, Gar um, Gar Garfield, and, okay, Austin, Garfield, and North Mondale. And once we get that uh, situated over there, then we're going to expand to the south side of Chicago and do the same thing, replicate the same business to make a Chicago a model. And then I'm going to turn the business over to qualified black middle class professionals, and I'm going to extend my business to the African continent starting in South Africa. So Africans, if y'all are serious, work with me, especially African immigrants here in America. Work with me. I'm trying to do something positive. Uh, I'm not about us out there marching and protesting. That's not what I'm about. We're going to solve our problems um, at the grassroots level, and this is on business. Um, after American slavery, the white supremacist financial elites flooded this country with Europeans. But when black people got released from those plantations, we couldn't get our 40 acres and the mule. So that's why um, they always, you know, want to play games. They always make sure when the immigrants come over here, they don't tell them to pull, pull their uh, bootstraps. They are given be benefits and land under the Homestead Act. Look it up. Um, that's also um, on my medium transcript under show and prove. They gave them free land and everything when they showed up. They have all the money, all the power, everything. And yet they are worried about the insignificant group of people who are at the bottom of American society. Amer descendants of American slaves. They are allow, allowing foreign enemies into this country who have ties to the Ch Chinese Communist Party, ties back to North Korea, ties back to Russia, and ties back to the Middle East. We're delineating from everybody and focusing on our own, meaning we're going to mind our own black business. The only reason why America is still in existence is because of descendants of American slaves. The day of us saving America is over. We are going to save ourselves. Do you think you're better? Okay, if you're better. Do you think you're superior? Okay, then you're superior. No problem. Then stop asking us to help you. Give us what our due, our reparations, and that's it. We don't want nothing else from you, and, and we don't want to be around you neither. We, my focus is on um, trying to expand the Kyle Chicago to the African continent because that's my ancestral homeland, and I want to fight and use my energy to help my people on the African continent that's going to be Gracam members. You're not a good camp member. All we're going to do is pray for you, show your tough love, and keep it moving. Because I want to make sure that none of my members have to go through what I'm going through. Got good ideas, trying to do something productive, trying to build something, and I got to sit up here and talk to people, and especially black people and um, African immigrants, and they're just looking at me like, you know, this is not no game, this is real. You know what I'm saying? Read my story. But again, God give us free wills, so, you know, I'm just doing the best that I can, and I want people to under, I want the black world to know my story. And again, we're going to separate ourselves from these off-code Negroes and um, naysayers and people that just don't mean our racial group any good. That's real. It's such a turn-off. But somebody has to do it. Again, I don't want to be doing this another 32 years. Um, 
Yes, again, all we ask for is our reparations and have equal access to resources and equality. And those that want that you know, aren't able to leave America because of finances, you know, that's how come I'm trying to build this business for you and your family. But you got to support me by buying the book, um, reading the story, donating to the film project, and sharing my video um, podcast with all your friends. That's going to help speed up the process. Help get my revised book on that best sellers list so that way uh, the black world can take us serious. That's all. Um, we want the same home loans, the same business loans, the same amount of schools, the same amount of hospitals, etc. We want all this just like you have in your community. U.S. Foreign policy has caused many problems in Latin America and in Asia. Now they're coming over here and and get benefits and resources. Some of these illegal immigrants are part of the car- cartel from Venezuela, who is um, raising havoc in our uh, cities. They are they are known for chopping up bodies in their homeland. That's the people that the Biden-Harris administration has allowed over here in this country. In the United States of America, black people are supposed to remain at the bottom in order for white supremacy to work. The Democrats are just the left wing of white supremacy, and the Republicans are the the right wing of white supremacy. They both have the same goal to maintain white, su- white supremacy and to protect white privilege. The Democrats and Republicans don't want to do reparations. They prefer to give us an al- illusion of, of inclusion. If you think for yourself, then you're going to start doing for yourself. When you start doing for yourself, you're going to start creating black business districts. Exactly what I'm trying to do. Trying to do that. That's how come a lot of black Americans, they looking at me all dumbfounded like, who is you? And won't you and my own family tell me to get a quote unquote real job? That means working for the man. I'm like, look, I'm trying to start my own business. I got the business title. I pay for that. Pay the city, state, and the government every year for this business title but um, I don't have any employees because I'm not making money from my book and items on my virtual store is barely selling this is how come I'm trying to do a film so that will help put this business on the map then I can hire people and move this thing from behind the computer and put all my ideas into action. The main thing out of the Willie Lynch letter, it, it said we have to keep them dependent on us. And unfortunately, a lot of black Americans don't want to think for themselves. Instead, they want to depend on the white supremacist financial elites to educate their children and for them to work, work for them. Black Americans prefer to go to their schools instead of creating their own schools. When we talk about Black Wall Street, that came from black American thinkers for ourselves, doing things for ourselves and building things for ourselves. Thinking for ourselves is the real danger for the white supremacist financial elites because once you're thinking, then you're going to start building things. The CAM members worldwide, it's our time to, to take our story to the next level. That is taking this story to the big screen so that we can reach the black masses and the black world. We have a lot of black people who want us to remain on the Democratic plantation because they are either Democratic Shields or Black Boulay. That's how they get paid, by selling us out. They need us for us to stay in that position so that they can get paid off our vote 
and our oppression. All these black celebrities you see speaking out for Kamala Harris. I want like-minded black Americans to destroy that economy by becoming critical thinkers. Focus on the issues in this election and ask yourself, was your family better off financially four years ago or now? When you start thinking for yourself, you are going to have to separate yourself from negative people. It could be family members or it could be friends. We want to connect with like-minded black Americans and like-minded African immigrants who want to help us build the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. That's going to inspire others. The white supremacist financial elites have billions of dollars to promote de degeneracy through movies and, and music. I want black Americans and African immigrants, especially your CAM members, to create our own business because that's where our freedom will, will, will be and owning and controlling our own businesses. These people don't want us building our own stuff. The Democrats keep you in poverty by giving you social programs. Through the Kyle of Chicago, we aim to get rid of the criminal element out of our community so that we can thrive, but we will use our resources to fight against the criminal element in our community by creating finances, giving our youth jobs. You understand? I want to put money in their pockets. I want to be in that position to do that. So they don't have to become or have to be uh, doing um, criminality, selling drugs, breaking into people's homes, stealing people's cars, carjacking. I believe we can get some of our brothers and sisters off the street where they don't have to fall into a life of crime, but we've got to build the cow Chicago first. Please leave a public comment about the topic in the comment section below this video podcast and share with your friends on all social media sites you are on. This will help get the ball rolling. Thank you all for listening. We greatly appreciate it. Put me on blast by telling all of your friends and friends family to watch our content on our YouTube page. I'm trying to send a challenge out to everybody that's listening to this video podcast. I need you all to support our film project so that we can move beyond cy cyberspace and get our story on the big screen to let the black world know who we are and what we're trying to do for our people that are trapped in American ghettos started in Chicago. Quote, Hood Liberator Made in Chicago, the war against Willie Lynch begins. You can be a part of this historic docudrama by contributing to our campaign either on our GoFundMe page or on our PayPal page, which will help fund marketing, promotion, clearance, legal, and general expenses. I would like to thank everyone who have contributed or will contribute to support us on our GoFundMe page or if you are a U.S. citizen, then you can use our PayPal page as a tax write-off because this is a legitimate 501c3 nonprofit faith-based community advocacy organization. You can also purchase items from our virtual store or purchase my revised book. The e-book is $9.99 or the paperback is $15 plus shipping and handling. We appreciate your support. You can find all of the links below this video podcast in the comments section below. I want to thank all of you for listening to our audio podcast on Spotify. With that being said, this will conclude our show for today. And we will see you on the next episode. Peace and blessings. And again, I hope that... Uh, I can get 10 people, even more, you know. I, I take 20 people that would be able to come on the show. But uh, at least 10, if possible. But um, thank you all for listening. And again, that's going to be next Saturday, November 9th, uh, 2 o'clock p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. American Central Time.
Okay? Thank you all for your time. Peace and blessings.